Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Spitting Venom, aka the Venom Vlog presents Carnage Week. Well, more like Carnage two and a half weeks, because uh, it's taken us a while to get here, and I'm so sorry for that. My work schedule was way crazier than I thought it was going to be, and with me working on the weekends and parking being such an issue at where I work because of the holidays, uh, I've been leaving earlier and coming home later. Uh, so it's been it's been a little bit of a struggle um, to get home in time and have the energy to make these videos, especially so soon after my surgery, just like just under a month ago. Uh, I'm still kind of recuperating from that. And I'm on new meds now uh, because the last ones I had were giving me intense stomach pains. Uh, so that, that was on top of everything. So I'm back now. Um, I'm feeling a lot better. And I have a few hours to kill before I go to work today, so I figure we'll knock out some videos, two of them being the Carnage Week videos that we uh, that I owe you guys. Uh, so uh, so first we're going to talk about Carnage USA in this episode, and then the next one we'll talk about the Carnage Born one-shot that came out recently. Um, and for those you know wanting to know, there are some things in the storyline that we haven't covered yet. Uh, we haven't gotten to the Flash Thompson Venom yet, so Flash Thompson Venom does show up in Carnage USA. And then also they talk about Hybrid. And that is a character we also haven't covered yet on this show. But I promise you we will be getting to both of those hybrid very soon and uh, Flash Thompson Venom uh, after we get through this uh, rest of this Eddie Brock stuff and, of course, through uh, Carnage Week here. So we have to go back to the 90s. We have to talk about Along Came a Spider and some other Eddie Brock stories before we wrap out Eddie Brock's like arc, uh, early arc as the character of Venom. Then we'll get into Anti-Venom and Flash Thompson Venom uh, probably around like uh, late spring of next year because we have a lot of content to cover between now and then but I'll do my best obviously and I'll go as fast as I can and, uh, and get this stuff out to you guys and I'm thinking about making a playlist where all the comic book stuff we talked about even though some of it's been out of order I think once we're all done I'll make a full playlist of everything in order so if you ever want to go back and just see the history of Venom through the comic books all 30 years, you can just read, you know, watch that one playlist and go in order. So we'll probably make that as soon as possible. But before we begin, I'd like to mention our sponsor for this episode. The Joe on Joe podcast is hosted by Joe Schlepsky, a diehard G.I. Joe fan who revisits the classic cartoon series to explore and discuss all things Joe. Visit the link in the description box below to visit the Joe on Joe website. Okay, back to Carnage USA. This book was written by Zeb Wells, and the art is by Clayton Crane, the same two people who brought us Family Feud that we just talked about in the last Carnage episode, and Clayton Crane was also the artist on Venom vs. Carnage. And I just forgot there were so many offsprings. I knew there was, a, what was it, Toxin, who came from Carnage and Venom vs. Carnage, but then in Family Feud, I forgot that Scorn was created as a, a symbiote offspring of Carnage in that story. I totally forgot about that. Um, so it's nice to get the refresher here, uh, and especially building up to the Carnage Born one-shot that we're going to talk about in the next Carnage episode. Uh, but Carnage USA was really great. Um, it came out during the time where Spider-Man was a member of the New Avengers, and uh, he was part of that team. And, and that they all kind of get involved in this, which is really fun and really cool. And they even poke a little bit of fun at the thing from Fantastic Four in this. Uh, but this story where we left off with Carnage in the last one is that him and Doppelganger got away uh, after the whole kerfuffle for a family feud uh, and Shriek got captured and Scorn was created. She did use uh, Shriek's power. Scorn used Shriek's powers of screaming uh, you know, to affect Carnage and apparently obliterate him, even though they know he got away, they couldn't find his body. And so now what happens is he's shown up in Doverton, Colorado, and uh, and nobody knows why. You know, he just shows up here, and it's like a quaint little town, uh, you know, a lot of mom and pop shops there, everybody knows each other, you know, older people sitting on the porch, drinking tea, you know, looking out over the town, and then uh, Carnage shows up, and he's hanging out in a meat packing plant, and he's just eating all the products. He's you know you know eating all the the cow meat and you know horse meat and everything, and uh, it's pretty gruesome. The opening of this is pretty gruesome. Some guy comes along, and he's like, uh, uh, "Hello," and he's like, uh, "Don't worry, sir. I'm gonna take it all." And he goes, "Take all of what?" And he's like, "Everything." And he like turns into Carnage, and he sends out his symbiotes, and basically he's just been feeding and feeding and feeding uh, on you know on all this like just raw meat and uh, and you know, finding new ways to use his powers. And so what happens is this little small town, almost like that movie The Crazies, which I really like, um, this little small town gets taken over by Carnage. He goes through the pipes, kind of like how he's done, and I, that's what I really like about Zeb Wells' writing. He he puts little subtle nods to old things from older comics. Sometimes he does direct references, and sometimes he does little fun, subtle things. Like the time where Carnage escaped from, uh, you know, from Ravencroft, he went through the pipes, and he sent the symbiote through the pipes, and that's what's happening. Carnage basically found a hub to the center of town, and like near a well and everything, and he sent out his symbiote through all the pipes and into everyone's houses, and he used those, uh, you know, that, that part of the symbiote to grow and wrap around people or just put like a little string around them and uh, and you know take control of them 
And that's kind of like his story in this is that he literally mind controls like 90% of this small town. He influences them by sending out a symbiote and wrapping around either their finger or their hand or their head um, or their neck, you know, or just covering them completely and turning them into carnages of his own. And it's him creating a family and uh, he wants to take over a town and he wants like this small town podunk lifestyle uh, but with him in control and it's completely horrifying. So Carnage is taking people over left and right in this town. He's not wasting any time at all. And so the book opens with this guy running home, like trying to get there, and because uh, he knows something's happening. He knows Carnage has gotten out, and he's you know fears for his family. And he's like, stay away from the pipe. Something's happening to the town. And when he gets there, he sees that his kids, like his wife and his uh, other kid, is downstairs. And then he has the older son and the little sister who's taking a bath upstairs. And he runs up there, and the little sister has been completely taken over by the Carnage symbiote, and the little brother is being assimilated at that time. And the dad is trying to stop it, and then the kids turn on him and you know attack. And uh, and then we cut to like after the you know the aftermath of Carnage taking over this town in the blink of an eye, and you see this cop, and he's you know leaving town. And if they said like in the narration that it took him like you know 12 hours or something to walk from his town to the neighboring town and report what's going on. And basically Carnage let him live and said, bring this list to that town and say, here are my demands. Tell this to the you know authorities so that they'll get the Avengers over here and tell them these are my demands. And, uh, and so basically this guy goes and they're like, well, where's the list? Where's the list? And it turns out the list is carved on the dude's body. Um, that's how gruesome this book is. And not only that, but they say that Cletus Cassidy makes spelling mistakes, so he crosses those words out and then starts again. And so this guy's body is completely covered in, uh, in basically uh, scratches that, uh, you know, that have words written into him of his demands, like a list of his demands. And it is terrifying. So the government is obviously already involved. Uh, they're the U.S. Emergency Response Center. Uh, they're trying to figure out, uh, you know, a contingency plan in case things don't go well with the Avengers uh, because they don't want to fully trust that the heroes will take care of everything because I think at this time we've already gone through you know civil war we we're past that we've already gone through a lot of stuff and so uh, so the heroes you know the, the government isn't fully you know uh, you know tuned in to the heroes and trusting them yet uh, so but the you know the Avengers are operational again so Spider-Man Wolverine Hawkeye and Captain America uh, decide to go in and battle this and Captain America it's great because he comes in he's like Spider-Man it's carnage and uh, there's just like this little brief exchange which is really great because it harkens back to Maximum Carnage, where Captain America helped Spider-Man fight Carnage at that time. So both of these guys have a personal interest in taking this guy down because of what happened to New York in Maximum Carnage. And also because of Maximum Carnage, you know, there was carnage everywhere, you know, people going crazy and stuff. That's what's happening here is Carnage, once again, has control over the people. And, uh, and so it's really, you know, it's hitting them in the gut. But before they leave, Spider-Man's like, we should get the thing, you know, uh, from Fantastic Four. He has a, a gun that would help us fight something like this and maybe help uh, end this fight quickly. And uh, and Wolverine's like, yeah, he's like, as soon as you get that symbiote off him, I'm stabbing the crap out of this guy. And, you know, Captain America's like, no, we're going to bring him in alive. And Wolverine's like, I'll never understand how you guys take down these guys. Like, I don't understand it. We're just going to have to fight him again in five years or something. So I kind of like Wolverine's perspective on this a little bit because it's typical Wolverine, you know. Um, but it's great that the Avengers have, like, these opposing uh, viewpoints uh, and then find this way to compromise on on morals and on their decisions. So uh, I always like that about some Avenger comics, uh, especially I like that in X-Men when I was growing up. Uh, so anyway, this was, uh, they had, you know, Carnage just taken over. He's sitting on the porch with these two old people and he's like, listen, lady, go get me some tea. And then the dad, you know, the old man is like, please don't hurt my wife. He's like, shut up. You know, I didn't tell you to speak. And, you know, he's again trying to keep control over everyone in town and he's just waiting for the Avengers to show up. And he sees like helicopters are being being flown out of town and leaving town and he's like all right they're finally here so he's prepping himself and of course he wants the avengers to come because that's where spider-man is and he wants to take his uh you know strikes in on spider-man he wants to get some revenge on spider-man so they go and get the thing but there's some jokes in here at the things you know expense like hawkeye's kind of like uh you know that guy the guy who always talks about yancey street and his aunt petunia like uh and he says clobber in time like he needs new material and i kind of like that they kind of meta poke fun at that most writers just have things say the same stuff over and over and over and Hawkeye's kind of over it. He's like, you know what, every time I'm around that guy, it's Aunt Petunia this and Yancey Street that. And uh, so there's like a little fun, you know, having there. But once they get to town, it is serious business. And they try to take down Carnage, but Carnage is already ready for them and he takes them over. He takes over all the Avengers except for Spider-Man because of course he wants Spider-Man to suffer. He wants him to see his friends being turned and forced to do horrible things and, uh, and he wants Spider-Man to feel alone. And so that's pretty much the crux of the story. And once the Avengers get taken over, the government people are like, all right, 
we need to send in a response team. We had contingency plans in case this didn't go well. So now we're going to enact those contingency plans. And so we're looking up Venom and currently Venom is Flash Thompson. We don't have that ready yet. Uh, Anti-Venom is out there. That's Eddie Brock. We don't have access to him. He's off the grid, uh, but we do have hybrid. And Hybrid was after Scream, uh, the five symbiotes from Lethal Protector, after Scream died uh, in separation anxiety, or soon after that, or I think she came back later and died later too. Uh, we haven't got into all those books yet. Um, but once, you know, basically what happened is those other four symbiotes, Lasher and Riot and those characters, uh, obviously Riot from the movie, all of them merged into one symbiote and became a character called Hybrid. And Scott Washington, I think was his name, he was like the person that, you know, the symbiote bonded, the massive symbiote bonded to, and he became hybrid. And that's a story we will talk about very soon. Uh, but for the sake of this, uh, hybrid gets pulled apart. They pull all four symbiotes back away from each other and give them to four new soldiers that are trained to use them in different ways. So it's very cool how they do this because it's not just, oh, these are symbiote people, you know, that have their own symbiotes. Their symbiotes are trained for a very specific reason and cause. And so it's kind of cool how they do it. They have like a sniper, a guy who like, you know, gets wrapped around in the symbiote and he can see better so he can be a better sniper. Uh, and it just only covers like the top half of his body. And then there's a guy who uh, I think it's Lasher and his symbiote comes out of him and forms like a dog and it's like a bloodhound and it can track down other symbiotes and, you know, other enemies that they're looking for. So it's really cool how they, you know, put this team together and, uh, and, and use them and utilize them. So while Spider-Man's like fighting his friends, uh, this team is being put together and sent in and Scorn is being recruited to be the fifth member of the team. And so when the government comes to her, they're like, would you be willing to kill Cletus Cassidy at the drop of a hat? And she says, of course I would. Uh, you know, uh, Dr. Knives is like, yeah, of course I would do that. And I'm like, all right, your suit is unique because when your symbiote was created, it bonded not just a little bit with you, but with the technology that was on your, you know, prosthetic arm. And so it has a very a tuned way of dealing with technology so we might be able to use that in battle to help take down carnage and so she says all right sign me up let's do this so her and the four members get sent in and this team is pretty cool it kind of reminds me a little bit of like predator like you know just like the big muscly jock guys but they all have like their own certain purpose like one guy he can be very stealth like his symbiote like you know camouflages his legs you know or, or like dampens the sound his legs make so he can sneak up on people and slice them with his knives he's like a close combat guy then i said like there's a sniper there's another guy who makes like a gatling gun and so he's kind of like the crowd control uh, symbiote guy you know so this is really cool stuff i actually really like how this story comes together and then they meet Scorn, and Scorn's like, all right, I'm going to go in with these guys. Uh, and meanwhile, Cletus, you know, he's got the whole town under his control. He's got the kids. Uh, the main guy at the beginning who went in to, like, try to get his wife and his kids before Carnage took over them, and, you know, his kids, like, attacked him. Um, you know, that guy is still out there. He, you know, him and a couple other people were able to avoid c contamination. They weren't infected by Carnage, and they're building up a little resistance, ready to go in town and uh, get their loved ones back. And that's when they come across Spider-Man. So they're all hanging out together. And meanwhile, Cletus has that guy's kids. He has two of them. But we remember he had three at the beginning. He had one downstairs and two upstairs, one taking a bath, and then the older brother was up there. So one of the kids so far we haven't seen. So it's, it's pretty gruesome stuff. And then he has the wife there, and he's basically telling the wife, look, you have to go kill your husband. He's built a resistance. Uh, take the kids with you. You're now my wife and kids, and I want you to go deal with your husband. Yeah, like I said, really brutal stuff. So this guy's wife and kids are now coming to kill him. Uh, so while that's happening, obviously the, the special forces team of symbiote people come into town and they're like, okay, we need to get in quick. So they track down Doppelganger, who's kind of like the bloodhound of Carnage, and he's kind of out in the perimeters of the city, you know, looking for scrap meat and stuff like that. And, uh, and he's basically there to warn Carnage in case anything shows up undetected. And so when these four come in, they sick their little bloodhound. Lasher, you know, creates his bloodhound and sicks it after Doppelganger and bites him and wounds him. And so now Doppelganger runs back to Carnage, uh, you know, wounded. And so that's what the team wanted. They're like, no, we want to signal him. We want him to know we're coming, but we also want this thing to lead us right to him. So if we hurt the dog, it'll go back to the master. As far as his team goes, the members we have are Petty Officer Howard Ogden, and he's like the stealth guy. I think he's the riot symbiote. And then we have uh, Lieutenant James Murphy. He's the agony symbiote. He's the one who makes like the, the Gatling gun. Uh, then we have Rico Axelton, um, he's the lieutenant, and he is Phage, and he's the one who is the sniper of the group. And then we have Chief Petty Officer Marcus Sims, who is Lasher. And so that's the main team. And then we have Dr. Knives, who is Scorn, obviously. And, uh, and this team is just really awesome. They're, they're, you know, they, they come in, they have like their little sense of humor, but they mostly are just there to like be awesome and, and badass, <laughs> basically. Um, but uh, they come in swinging, and they come in with a plan. 
and a, a way to attack. And I really like these characters. I actually wish uh, they'd show up again somewhere. I don't know if they have. We'll obviously get into that as we read more stories because some of the stuff is around this era and past this is where my knowledge gets a little fuzzy. So as we reread stuff, hopefully we see these characters again. Meanwhile, we have Cletus Cassidy who has taken over the town. He's had everyone in town come to the church. You know, he knows trouble's coming and he has Captain America and the Avengers there, and minus Spider-Man obviously. And he's like getting people in the church to do horrible things right in front of Captain America. And Captain America's like, I'm gonna kill you, you know? I'm gonna stop you once and for all. And Carnage is like, yeah, sure you are, dude. He's like, nope, you're gonna watch these people do horrible things. And then I'm gonna make you do horrible things too. And uh, and Cap is like fighting so hard, trying to prevent some of this stuff from happening, but he can't. Uh, and then meanwhile, the guy who, you know, was looking for his family, he gets attacked, his wife shows up with the kids, they attack him, but Spider-Man jumps in and saves the day. Uh, and while while he's you know saving him, you have the four symbiote people in Scorn coming across a wave of symbiotes uh, to fight. And then Captain America breaks free from his hold and starts fighting back against Carnage. So the battle now has officially begun and they're doing everything they can to fight back, but then Carnage gets the upper hand, the symbiotes start getting the upper hand, outweighing the government symbiotes. And then Spider-Man is having trouble fighting the wife and kids because there's still a woman in there and two children. And so the government's like, all right, contingency A was the four symbiote people that we sent in. Contingency B was sending Scorn with them. So far, this isn't working. So finally, we got access to contingency C, and that is Agent Venom, a.k.a. Flash Thompson. So Spider-Man actually finally subdues the wife and the kids, and then the husband is trying to deal with them, trying to set them free. Spider-Man gets away, goes over to Carnage, and Carnage has recaptured Captain America, retaken over everyone, and he sees that he's being attacked. His town's under attack from those, you know, symbiotes from the government, and, uh, and now Carnage is like, all right, everyone, get off my lawn. We are going to fight. We're going to deal with this now. I'm tired of playing games. I'm tired of, like, letting you guys live and, you know, bait you here and stuff. He's like, we're just going to straight up kill all of you now, and I'm going to use my new friends, the Avengers, and then we're going to slaughter this town or whatever and so he's you're just ready for blood now he's tired of this uh so spider-man shows up and carnage just starts kicking the crap out of him instantly but then luckily uh you know we have a venom come in agent venom flash thompson gets sent in he has a repulsor ray that he hits carnage with and once he hits him with it it actually severs it, it's so strong it uh it knocks carnage down but it's uh, and it messes with the symbiote but it messes with it so much that it completely uh, breaks his control over the whole town and so in this one, we just have Flash Thompson. He's there, he's got his gun, and he's just like, all right, uh, stay down, Carnage. And Spider-Man's like, who in the heck and what is going on? And uh, Venom's like, yeah, we're going to deal with this later, Spider-Man. I'm a friend, and I'm here to take down, uh, you know, Carnage. He's like, call me Venom. And so they get into it, and you actually get to see this battle. And what I love is this battle ends so quickly. Like, Flash Thompson comes in, beats the living crap out of Carnage, uh, knocks, you know, with that first shot, weakened him big time. He headbutts him. He gets the suit to separate from Cletus Cassidy, and then he puts a gun right into Cletus Cassidy's mouth. And he's like, any last words? And Spider-Man's like, no, what are you doing? And he's just like, what are you talking about? This is Cletus Cassidy. I got to kill him. And then that's when the, uh, the Avengers that are, you know, possessed by Cletus, he gets control over them for two more seconds, at least enough to get them to get them him off of him so they come in and they knock venom off and then now there's a real fight on their hands but it was like oh so close like flash thompson no holds barred just took a cheap shot you know which is smart um you know tactical wise against carnage he took a shot from behind hit him with that blaster and then came in and put a gun right in his mouth and you're just like oh my god he's gonna end this we're gonna finally have the end of carnage but I'm, you know unfortunately that doesn't go down that way so um Carnage, you know, he gets, uh, he loses control of the city. Uh, his symbiote gets knocked off of him, and so does the Venom symbiote. They, you know, they're messing with that gun, and it goes off. It separates the suit from both of them, and then they fall down into this tunnel, and they end up in this, like, facility underneath the town. And, uh, and while they're down there, they both don't have their symbiotes on them, which means Flash Thompson doesn't have his legs. Uh, you know, the symbiote, he bonded with the Venom symbiote, and he sent in for government projects. This is something we haven't covered yet, but for those who don't know, uh, Flash Thompson decides to say, you know, sign up with the government again because he used to be a soldier, and then he lost his legs, and then he went through that whole thing with Norman Osborn, where Norman Osborn got him drunk and crashed him into, like, a school uh, and, you know, ruined his reputation. So Flash Thompson is on the path of redemption, and after, you know, the Venom symbiote is taken from Eddie Brock, back when we talked about Last Temptation of Eddie Brock before that, with, uh, actually with Siege, when the suit is taken off of Matt Gargan. It is now in control, you know, controlled by the government. They have the symbiote and they loan it to Flash Thompson because they're like, if you fully bond with it, we might have a Venom situation. But if we just let you bond with it for 24 hours at a time and then take you away from it for a couple days, like you could still be in control. And so that's what's happening here. They put the suit back on him and they send him into this mission 
And when he gets there, uh, when the suit's taken off of him, he now no longer has his legs because he lost them before. And then what's interesting about that was, I didn't even think about the, the comparison, is that Carnage here, he has those metal legs, uh, but they start to wither away without the symbiote attached to them. So now you have two guys uh, without their legs fighting each other uh, with an, just one knife between them. And they like, you know, knock the knife out of each other's hand. They crawl over to get it. They grab it. They try to stab you. And it's actually really interesting. I, it's like a, you, you have, I haven't seen a fight like this in comics where it's two guys or two people um, who have lost limbs battling each other like this. And uh, it's really crazy. And so the two of them are just crawling at each other, going at it, trying to take each other down. And it's a really intense battle. And meanwhile, while that's happening, the Carnage suit and the Venom suit, they snuck away and they got into these animals. Like the, one of the guys that lived in town, he had like a small zoo and he had like a lion and a gorilla. So the lion gets taken over by the Carnage suit and the gorilla gets taken over by the Venom suit. And it's just those suits acting out of desperation and going to the nearest host, uh, but then they start attacking each other again. So you have this like carnage lion uh, fighting this Venom gorilla. And meanwhile, you have Spider-Man and the Avengers checking in on everybody in the city and making sure they're all right and also trying to figure out how to get down to where Venom or, or where Flash Thompson and Cletus Cassidy went. But they, I don't think at this point, know that Flash Thompson is Venom. Uh, so they're just like, who was that guy? How do you, you know, he had the Venom suit. How do he help us? We got to get down to him. Who knows what Cletus Cassidy's doing to him down there? We got to figure it out. And they're trying to get down there, but they, you know, they're having no luck. And meanwhile, the government is sending in another contingency, which is dropping um, bombs on this small town. And so now the, you know, the, the basically the Avengers have to deal with that, try to protect the civilians, get them away, and then isolate the Carnage symbiote into one location so that when the bomb comes, it takes out Carnage at least, you know, and they can maybe still save uh, Venom or, you know, they're not really too concerned about Venom, uh, but uh, at least they can take down Carnage. And so while that's happening, they lure the Carnage suit into the middle of town, the bombs come, they knock it down, and uh, and that's when the Venom symbiote slinks away, goes down into the hole that they, you know, that Cletus and Flash fell in, and it goes down into there, and it rebonds with Flash right at the right moment, right before Cletus Cassidy was about to kill him. And you see the gorilla standing there and it no longer has a suit on him. And then Cletus is like, why is that gorilla here? And then he turns around and the suit has gone back to Flash Thompson. And now Flash Thompson is Venom again. And he's holding by the throat uh, Cletus Cassidy that has no legs and, uh, and no symbiote. So he's easily taken down. And he brings him to Cap and he slams him on the ground. And he says, you know what, I'm taking your advice. I'm, I'm not going to kill him. I'm going to hand him over to you so you can, uh, you know, we can do this the right way. Uh, we need to be better than our enemies. And, and Cap is like... Thank you, like like thank you, Venom, you know, whoever you are for, for doing that. Because as you know, Flash Thompson was a big Spider-Man fan, like fanboy, uh, even though he picked on Peter Parker, but he was also a big Captain America fan, and that's why he joined the military. Uh, so it's really cool. I really like the story. There's like some nice little threads and character moments in it. Um, and then meanwhile, you have uh, the father who, uh, you know, lost, you know, his wife was taken over by Carnage, his kids were taken over, all the way from back in the beginning of the book. As they're taking Carnage away, or Cletus away, to arrest him, they scoop up this Carnage suit, and they're like, all right, we had that contained, and now we have Cletus, and we're going to take him away. Um, so as they're taking Cletus away, the dad comes up, and he has a shotgun, and he's aiming it right at Cletus. He says, you heroes may think, you know, this is how you have to solve things, but I'm telling you right now, I'm not letting this scumbag live. He, what he did to my family, and Spider-Man's like, yes, yes, we know. He did this to a lot of people, and we're really sorry, and we try to get here in time, and we're, we're sorry this happened to you, but, you know, you you have your family. You're, they're still alive. The wife, your wife's there. Your two kids are there. And the guy goes, yeah, don't you understand, Spider-Man? I had three kids. I had a daughter at the beginning of this. And, uh, and, Spider and so Spider-Man's like, wait, what's happened? He's like, you had a daughter? And, uh, and he's like, yeah. And so Spider-Man's like, I still, you know, I can't let you do it. And he takes the gun. He goes, God, forgive me. I'm sorry, but I can't let you kill Cletus Cassidy. He has to be, you know, tried for his crimes. And the dad falls to his knees and he's crying. And he's like, I don't see it that way. I don't see this brand of justice working. Uh, he's going to get loose and he's going to do this to somebody else. And, and I, why are you stopping me? And Spider-Man's like, I'm sorry, I have to. And meanwhile, you know, Wolverine is like, and I told you guys, like, this, this is not how we should deal with this guy. I feel like by letting him live, he wins in the end. And then it cuts to Cletus and he's sitting in his cell and he's smiling. So yeah, this book is intense. It's it's really gruesome at times and it's really thought provoking. I thought in a, if for a comic like this where you're just like, all right, it's going to be Carnage fighting the Avengers and stuff. And it's a kind of simple thing. But I like the differences of morality. I mean, this is something I feel like we don't see a lot in comics nowadays is different viewpoints, uh, even the viewpoints I don't agree with. Like, I don't know if I agree I understand the dad's pain in this situation, but I don't know if I agree with dealing with Cletus that way. Um, you know, but at the same time, you know, it's hard. It's hard to say because someone in that shoes, 
you know, it's their it's their point of view, and and they I feel like they're right and I'm right, you know, like whether both can be right. Um, I feel like that's you know kind of the world doesn't have to be so one extreme or the other, and that's what I liked about this book was that it throughout it it had these two different viewpoints on how to deal with something like Carnage, and then those come to a, a head at the end with Spider Man, and it's so Spider Man who's like the everyday man who became a superhero, and then literally an everyday man with different points of views having this moment right at the end there, and I thought that was great, and I think Zeb Wells is a very talented writer, and I actually miss that guy. I don't think he writes a lot of stuff anymore in comic books, um, but when he was coming on these characters and doing like Venom stuff and Carnage stuff, like I really dug it. I thought he really captured these characters and understood them, and even though in Dark Origin there's some criticisms I have about some of the stuff he did in there, but overall there were part, parts in that story that I consider really great, uh, you know, character-shaping moments for Eddie Brock, um, and I know some of you guys might disagree with me on that one, and that's okay. So if there's if you have a different viewpoint on this book, I would love to know what it is down below. Uh, have you read it yourself? If so, do you have a favorite moment in it? And uh, is there anything I didn't cover that you want to talk about? We can continue all that down below, of course. Uh, thank you for watching my show as always. In the next episode, or next Carnage episode, I don't know if it'll be the very next episode of this, but in the next Carnage episode, we'll talk about Carnage Born. Um, and then after that, we'll get back to just Eddie Brock stuff. We'll get back to the movie stuff. I think the Blu-ray and DVD comes out tomorrow. So I'm going to try to get all these videos up as soon as possible. So that way I can film like a nice fun vlog of me going to Walmart and Target tomorrow to buy the Blu-rays of Venom. So I'm so excited. Hopefully you guys own the movie already. And if so, let me know in the comments down below also uh, what your favorite part of the movie is. Thanks so much for watching my show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you in the future. Peace.